Now let's review renal and liver diseases. Starting off with renal disease. Renal disease is a critical topic on the NAPLEX as it significantly impacts drug dosing, safety, and patient outcomes. The kidneys are responsible for filtration, which is removing waste products from the blood, regulation, which is maintaining fluid, electrolyte, and acid-base balance, secretion, which is producing hormones like erythropoietin and ranian. Drugs that cause kidney disease are aminoglycosides, cisplatin, loop diuretics, polymyxin radiographic, vancomycin, amphotericin, cyclosporine, NSAIDs, contrast dye, and tacrolimus. Both creatinine clearance and glomerular filtration rate are used to measure how well the kidney functions. Creatine clearance estimates how much creatinine is cleared from your blood by the kidneys per minute. It's a practical tool for adjusting drug doses, while glomerular filtration rate measures how much blood the kidneys filter per minute. It reflects overall kidney function and is used to stage kidney disease. Creatine clearance is calculated using the cockcroft galt equation as you can see. It's good to memorize this equation and be able to calculate creatine clearance to see if any medications need to be adjusted or not. ACE inhibitors and ARBs are recommended in patients with hypertension and albuminuria to prevent kidney disease progression. They inhibit renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, causing arteriolar dilation. This reduces pressure in the glomerulus, decreases albuminuria, and provides cardiovascular protection. Next, you can see a table of drugs that require a decrease in dose or an increase in intervals in patients with chronic kidney disease. It's good to memorize these so you can make adjustments to any patients taking these medications and has CKD. When reading patient cases, it's important for you to evaluate patients, disease states, and see which medications they are on to see if any doses need to be adjusted or changed. Next, let's cover medications that are contraindicated in CKD. For any patients with a creatine clearance of less than 60, then nitrofurantoin is contraindicated. For patients with creatine clearance less than 50, then Truvada, Complera, Destrigo, Strybild, Symphy, and Voriconazole are contraindicated. For patients with creatine clearances less than 30, then Bicarvi, Discovi, Genvoya, Odefsi, Simtuza, Dabigatran, Rivaroxaban, NSAIDs, Meperidine, and SGLT2 inhibitors are contraindicated. Moving on to drugs that raise potassium levels in the body. These include ACE inhibitors and ARBs, aliskirin, aldosterone receptor antagonists, canagliflozin, SMXQ-TMP, drospirinone containing COCS, any potassium supplements, cyclosporine, everolimus, and tacrolimus. If a patient has severe hyperkalemia, then here are the steps to treating hyperkalemia. First, you want to assess the severity of hyperkalemia. Mild cases, where K levels are 5.1 to 5.5, have no ECG changes, usually asymptomatic. Moderate cases, where K levels are 5.6, 6.5, have possible ECG changes, mild symptoms. Severe cases, where K levels are above 6.5, is life-threatening, often with significant ECG changes. The first step in treating hyperkalemia is you'd want to stabilize the heart to prevent any arrhythmias. To do this, you can use calcium gluconate or calcium chloride. This does not decrease potassium in the body. It only stabilizes myocardial cells to prevent arrhythmias. Next, we want to move the potassium to shift potassium intracellularly. To do this, you can use regular insulin, dextrose, sodium bicarbonate, or albuterol. Next, we want to remove it from the body. To do this, we can use furosemide, sodium polystyrene sulfonate pateromer, sodium zirconium cyclosilicate, or hemodialysis. Hyperkalemia is a critical condition that requires prompt recognition and treatment to prevent life-threatening complications like arrhythmias. 
Knowing which medications can cause hyperkalemia and how to manage it step by step is essential for safe patient care. Remember the three main goals in treatment. Stabilize the heart, shift potassium into cells, and remove excess potassium from the body. Let's talk about hepatitis and liver diseases. The liver is a powerhouse organ. It metabolizes drugs, produces bile, stores essential nutrients, and synthesizes proteins like albumin and clotting factors. When the liver isn't working properly, everything from digestion to drug metabolism can go haywire. First, let's start with hepatitis. Hepatitis simply means inflammation of the liver. It can be caused by viruses, alcohol, certain drugs, or even autoimmune conditions. The most common forms are viral, hepatitis A, B, and C. Hepatitis A is usually spread through contaminated food or water. It's acute, self-limiting, and most people recover completely. Then there's hepatitis B, which is transmitted through blood and bodily fluids. It can be acute or chronic, but the good news is that there's a vaccine. For chronic cases, we treat it with medications like tenofovir, entecavir, or sometimes interferon. Hepatitis C is mainly transmitted through blood and often becomes chronic, but it's curable. Direct-acting antivirals like sofosbuvir and letipasvir are game-changers in treating this disease. In liver disease treatment, DAA stands for direct-acting antiviral. DAAs are a class of medications specifically used to treat chronic hepatitis C virus, HCV, infection. They work by targeting specific steps in the HCV life cycle, effectively stopping the virus from replicating. These drugs have revolutionized HCV treatment, offering high cure rates with fewer side effects compared to older therapies like interferon. Starting off with NS3-4A protease inhibitors are medications ending in Previr, like Grazoprevir and Glecoprevir. Next, we have NS5A inhibitors. These are replication complex inhibitors and end in Asvir. And finally, we have NS5B inhibitors, which are polymerase inhibitors. These end in Buvir, like Sophosbuvir. Next, let's move on to lab tests for liver diseases. When the liver experiences a lot of wear and tear, it can lead to cirrhosis. Cirrhosis just means scarring of the liver and is usually irreversible. The most common causes are from hepatitis and alcohol use. The symptoms include the yellowing of skin and the yellowing of the whites of eyes, along with nausea, vomiting, dizziness, loss of appetite, and malaise. In liver disease and lab monitoring, AST and ALT are enzymes that help assess liver health and detect liver damage or inflammation. An increase in these labs can indicate acute liver toxicity. AST, which stands for aspartate aminotransferase, has a normal range of 10 to 40. ALT, which stands for alanine. Aminotransferase has a normal range of 7 to 56. When evaluating a patient case to see if they have chronic liver disease, you want to check for an increase in AST, ALT, FIOS, LDH, and INR, while having a decrease in albumin. In patients with hepatic encephalopathy, you will see an increase in ammonia. When evaluating for jaundice, you will see an increase in total bilirubin. It's important for you to know which labs indicated which disease state. That way, you could assess patients when given their labs. Moving on to medications that induce liver injury. These include acetaminophen, amiodarone, isoniazid, methotrexate, nefazodone, ketoconazole, nevirapine, NRTI, propylthioracil, and valproic acid. 